Welcome on in, football fans. It's your boy, GS Luke, here with our DFS and prop preview for week five of the NFL season in tomorrow's main slate contest. Gonna break down three game stacks that I love out there for Sunday's action to help you get some correlated action out there in your GPP lineups. And then afterwards, we've got five props that I really like over there on underdog and prize picks that I've already taken in a few slips myself and that you might wanna consider adding to a few of your own. So a lot to talk about. Let's start it off with first on the DFS side and this top three stacks for GPPs. The first two options that we're going through this week are going to be from the same game. So I guess it's truly only two games that we're going out there and stacking, but these top two options in a Josh Allen and a CJ Stroud are among my favorite on the entire slate. And part of that is the extremely close spread there and a 47 and a half point total between the Bills and the Texans. But even more than that, they're also an expensive quarterback stack, which may say, wait, how would that be a positive if they're going to cost more? But it forces you to be a little bit more different with the rest of your lineup. A lot of the chalk this week, a lot of your common builds are going to be taking guys that are in this mid-tier range, maybe a more expensive running back or wide receiver as it's pairing. And I think this week, the way to go about it might be to spend up at quarterback, maybe spend down with some of the options that you're pairing with him and to go after um, some of the other cheaper players on the slate that open up that salary. So even if you wanted to take a Josh Allen, um, pair him out there, with an elite target like Kincaid. On the flip side, go CJ Stroud, maybe a Nico Collins at wide receiver. There is so much value available on this slate that you're going to have all the leeway to go out there and do so. So whether it's Trey Sermon at running back, you've got the Packers wide receivers, a Tucker Craft, Jordan Whittington. I mean, there are a ton of really good points per dollar plays down low this week. Um, you're going to have the salary to work with anyway. So uh, I would say that these expensive quarterbacks might be a way to get a little bit different as both are going to be sub 5% owned at the position. And I don't really have to sell you on them that much, right? It's Josh Allen, the best fantasy quarterback in the NFL. Uh, maybe not the best points per dollar value because he is $7,700. But if you spend up, it is going to change you out there from the roster construction standpoint. And with that rushing upside he brings to the table, I mean, he could go out there and get over the 30 fantasy point mark if this is a shootout like they're expecting. So um, that's why I like these top two options. You're going to have the salary to work with. In terms of your stacking options, options for Josh Allen. You've got Kincaid, Coleman, and uh, James Cook out there. Um, I'd be buying it back almost every single time, regardless of which side I'm playing here. And uh, buyback options, which, you know, coincidentally would also be the guys that you could stack out there with CJ Stroud, would be Nico Collins, Diggs, Tank Dell, and Dalton Schultz. I would say if you're looking to get a little bit different with some of the stacking options, a Tank Dell going to be relatively low owned this week. Same thing with Dalton Schultz. And then over there on the Bill side of things, a Coleman and a James Cook. If you went with a running back pairing as a uh, combination, um, would be relatively low on the way to go about it as well. And then the last stack we're going to go through here, and uh, I guess just before we do that, if you want access to all of these sheets yourself with all my projections, uh, check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description of the video to get there. Um, you get access to this entire spreadsheet completely uncensored. That, of course, has got my projection stack info player pool stuff out there for every position. You can see over here with running back, we've got the same thing completely uncensored. All of that over there on the Patreon. So check it out if you guys want all my content, all the stuff I'm doing for every single slate, not only for main slates here, but also for showdown on Thursday night football, Sunday night football, Monday night. And uh, this week, we've also got the London slate up there. So uh, make sure to check that out if you guys haven't already. But the last stack we're going to go through, another full game that I like, is going to be this Colts versus Jaguars game. And I would say that Trevor Lawrence is maybe a little bit slept on as well. But the side that I really like is a cheaper Joe Flacco. And I know this as a Steeler fan, he looked really good last week out there beating uh, our undefeated Steelers until that point. Uh, but he looked really good specifically with his wide receivers. The chemistry was there right off the bat. In fact, um, he seemed to be even better with the wide receivers than starting on um, quarterback Anthony Richardson. Uh, Josh Downs looked like an all pro. You had Michael Pittman getting a bunch of yards after catch for them. Um, they looked like a real productive offense. So I would say that it might even be an upgrade over AR 15. And with him doubtful out there, there for Sunday. He was a game time decision. Now he's doubtful out there. Um, I think that he's a fantastic option out there for the Colts. In fact, I raised my projections for Michael Pittman and Josh Downs after getting that news um, this morning. So I think that he's a good option. I think he's going to get some ownership as the week goes on. So you can see I have him currently at just 3.8% projected ownership, um, partially because that news just dropped this morning. But if he only stays in that like five, maybe 6% range in terms of ownership, I think that he brings a 
lot of upside at $5,500. On the other side of the game, you've got the Jaguars that really need to go out there and win one. And uh, the other thing about this Colts offense is they don't have Jonathan Taylor, so we know they're going to have to throw the ball, right? They've got Chase Sermon there, who's not nearly as productive as JT. So I think they're going to go extremely pass heavy. It'll be very predictable usage out there for the Colts. And on the flip side, you've got a team that has to get after it. So whether you're running it back with an ETN, who is yet to have a really big game this year, um, Holby relatively low owned at the running back position. Kirk, Thomas, Davis at wide receiver. And now that you have Evan Ingram rolled out at tight end, you've got a lot of value out there on a Bryn Strange too. So another spot, by the way, you could go out there, save some salary if you need to go out there and spend up for a Josh Allen or a CJ Stroud. But Joe Flacco, if you're looking for a little bit more of an economical option, uh, maybe you really like some running backs towards the top end of the board, wide receivers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you might have to use a Joe Flacco stack to make that kind of lineup work. So that's what I'll say about the slate. These are three quarterback stacks I really like, a couple spend ups that you can, you know, go out there, force yourself to some lower salary players, and the one that can open up that salary for the spent ups up top. And now for the prop side of things where we've got five props I've already entered that you might want to consider adding to a few slips yourself. So first prop is going to be Javante Williams over 12 and a half rushing attempts on books. He's in that minus 125 to minus 130 range out there for the over. And what I like is the, all the momentum that he got going last week. Real tough defense, went out there, had his most productive week of the entire year. And it's not even just that week before that was also building some momentum. And then as you know, a very close game out there between the Raiders and the Broncos expected, if this day is competitive, he's going to get 15 to 20 carries easily. Um, I think you're going to see them lean on that running attack. Bo Nix has had a very sketchy start to his rookie season. Some promise for sure, but if they actually are serious about winning football games, um, they proved last week the good way to go out there and do that, right? If they're going to stay competitive, they have a solid solid O-line, a solid rushing O-line at least, to go out there and get the job done. And Javante Williams is that bell cow back for the Broncos now. So they've got a few other guys mixing in more receiving backs out of the backfield. But in terms of the guy that I expect to hold most of that usage, go out there, command uh, at least 50% of the rushing attempts would be a Javante Williams. So 12 and a half rushing attempts, solid over there. A little bit of line value, uh, not much with minus 125 to minus 130 odds, but still a little bit of an extra boost there in our back pocket. Then the other prop I took, it actually was an over at 12 and a half rushing attempts. That got bumped from 12 and a half to 13. So I pivoted a little bit and went to his over on rushing yards instead. And that of course is Travis Etienne, the other side of that Joe Flacco stack that we were talking about for fantasy. And even though I do like Joe Flacco to potentially have a big fantasy week, part of that is because I expect the Jaguars to be winning. Part of that is because they're, you know, the favorites. You'd see that out there at the sports book line. And on top of that, you've also got a team that can really run the ball when they're playing well. To this point of the year, they have not done that. Um, Tank Bigsby showed a little bit of upside with his yards per carry last week, but they've got to commit to the run more if they're going to go out there and win games. So just like you have up here at the Broncos, I think if the Jaguars are serious about going out there and winning, you're going to see ETN get well over 12 and a half carries. And this line at 52 and a half rushing yards is a few yards lower than the other books in the industry. So I think there's a little bit of line value here. That's why I pivoted to this prop in particular, because even though that 12 and a half went to 13, this line uh, is actually even better than where it was before. So uh, I like that. I would prefer the 12 and a half line. If maybe they bump that back from 13 to 12 and a half, you might want to consider adding that yourself. Uh, but even at this kind of number, they're expected to be leading, should be leading the script, um, should be getting a lot of carries out there to ETN. And considering that for his career, he averages well over four and a half yards per carry. Um, if he can get to 13 plus rushes, uh, that'd be over. And on underdog, we've got three props I've already entered that are all unders on reception targets. And what you'll notice about underdog, if you've been playing over here for a while, particularly for this category, is that normally a lot higher than what we have on prize picks than other sports books. For example, right, a Garrett Wilson is down at eight targets. Um, you don't have comparisons for Jaden Reed or Kyron Williams, but considering that Jaden Reed is at five and a half receptions on most books and juiced under, Kyron Williams is at three and a half receptions and juiced about minus 175 under, all of these are massive values towards the under. And the reason why I went with a three-leg slup here out here for 6X is that there's a lot of push equity with these even number props. I mean, a Jaden Reed, a Wilson wouldn't surprise me at all if they ended up getting there to nine. I mean, even a Kyron Williams, he has pushed that number one time this year. So I'm not going to rule that out. I mean, hell, they could go over for all we know, right? We're just trying to make 
you know, the best decisions that we can here. Um, and even with some guys out for the Packers, nine targets, 10 targets to go over there would be over a 35% snap share, or I should say a target share out there for the Packers. Um, that's going to be hard to do, right? When you have guys out for a team, you don't just give all the targets for the guys that are out to the guys that are starting, right? You still have guys that are the next man up, right? Still people that are going to be playing those same kind of snaps. And while their usage share, sure, it might be lower, right? Than what the starter was. And that difference, you'll give out there to a Jaden Reed that doesn't take him from he's normally at like a four and a half maybe five and a half six reception line I should say a target line his reception line is normally like three and a half out there on books up to nine though right to boost it up an entire one and a half x is where this is an inefficient projection um Garrett Wilson same thing right he's at a four and a half reception line on books that's double the targets of his reception line right it's just too high it's too inflated it's something that we normally see over here on underdog week to week uh something a mistake they make all the time over here and uh Kyron Williams the same thing right five targets if it was at four and a half it'd be a little bit more of a fair line I would still lean under because he's too so heavily under there at three and a half reception but at five, it's a no-brainer with that push equity. So that's a 6x paying slip. If they all go under, that'd be great. We'd get a 6x payout. Uh, if two end up pushing, it would be a refund, unfortunately. But um, that's why we took the three-leg slip, right? If we end up getting one of these pushing, which is uh, pretty likely on a three-leg slip, then we'll still get a 3x payout if the other two hit. Alrighty, guys, that is all about for the week five DFS and prop preview. Before you hop on out of here, go ahead, smash that like button for me, and also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the content to come. That, of course, will include our Monday night football preview, all the week six content and beyond out there for the NFL season, as well as all the golf content over here during the fall swing too. So if you're watching both sports, this is the place to be. If you're only watching one, we still got you covered out there from either angle. I appreciate your support here on the channel as usual. And for a chance to earn a free month on my Patreon page, which of course is where you can find the spreadsheets you find throughout my videos and all of the prop stuff I'm entering as well. So if you want all the slips, I'm taking an underdog and prize picks. Uh, you can enter the earn a free month of that Patreon page just by by giving me your top score on tomorrow's slate. If you can get the top score, you will win a free month of that Patreon page. And to go ahead and break any ties, go ahead and give me your projection for that player as well. So if you can get the top score, the closest projection of anyone that guesses that same player, you will win that free month of the Patreon page. So if you want to join now, you don't want to have to win a giveaway to go out there and get in there, check out the link in the description, as I said before. But best of luck with all of your exposure out there for Sunday. Take down a GPP or two for me, cash out on those prop slips, and maybe we have ourselves a Sunday evening.